thank you guys for coming back welcome to part two we're just gonna pick it up right where we left off so let's get into it another term you may hear is external scholarships external scholarships are scholarships that come from outside of the university they're not attached to anybody um, so I am gonna do a video about some really popular prestigious external scholarships that you should definitely apply for. But those external scholarships, they follow you anywhere that you wanna go. You wanna transfer schools, cool. You want to, you know, you commit to a school but then you change your mind at the last minute, cool. It doesn't matter to them. All they need to know is where you at right now so that they can apply to your account. Okay, so we kinda of did touch a little bit on athletic scholarships but i'm going to go ahead and make them their own category so athletic scholarships athletic scholarships are scholarships that you get for participating in some kind of sport for the institution okay um so it is institutional based as well um so if i want to run track for university wide um then I can do that and get a scholarship for it. Some people consider band scholarships as athletic scholarships as well. Okay, so I mean, you can get them for any sport, rugby, cheerleading, football, tennis, um, track, any sport that you play and are really good at, really, really good at, <laughs> then um, these are generally um, scholarships that you can get very difficult to get um, especially if you want to go to a d1 school they are super difficult to get generally you will get them when a recruiter comes to see you uh, especially if you're at a d1 school okay now if you go to if you want to go to a d2 d3 you know maybe you can walk on but d1 schools a lot of times they already know who they want they already have who they want um, not saying that you can't, you know, work your way up, but it's tough, but all things are possible. Another term you may hear is full ride scholarships. Okay, full ride scholarships are scholarships that pay for pretty much everything. Okay, so they may pay for your housing, for your food, for your tuition, they may give you a book scholarship to pay for your books. Um, or, you know, they may even give you a small stipend, right? That goes in your pocket, a stipend, that's for you. <laughs> so we love those, okay? Full ride scholarships generally pay for everything. You don't have any extra fees except if you're out of state, some institutions out of state, even though you get a full ride, will not pay for your out of state difference, okay? I also went to Auburn University and at Auburn, the out of state fee was like a lot. <laughs> but let's just say it was $10,000. It wasn't, but let's just say that. You know, even though you have a full ride, you still may have some fees. But you can use scholarships, other scholarships, external scholarships, and other institutional scholarships to pay for that, right? So speaking of that gap, that difference, there are some scholarships that cover gaps. They are explicitly for if you want to attend an institution out of state and you have a gap of fee to cover because you wanted to go to school out of state. Okay, another scholarship that you may hear about are departmental scholarships. Departmental scholarships come explicitly from the department that you're applying to. You may not be applying to a specific department. You may be applying to a school and say, I want my major to be Z. Department Z is going to have their own money set aside for students and they probably they may give you a scholarship if you talk to the departmental dean or you know somebody that is very big in that department whoever controls the money um and try to try to get some um finances from that there's another term that you may hear partial scholarships 
partial scholarships are offers that you may get that are not full rides, but are institutional scholarships and do cover some of your fees. So maybe your school costs $30,000 a year and they give you a $10,000 partial scholarship. So that means that you're gonna get $10,000 that year and you'll still have $20,000 to cover. Another scholarship that you may hear about are scholarships for non-traditional students. So what is that? A non-traditional student is someone who has had some life experience before entering college. So an example could be someone who is maybe a little bit older than the average student. Um, maybe they worked first, you know, got a um, life experience that way, or maybe they were in the military, you know, and they got a little life experience that way. Um, speaking of the military, there are military-based scholarships, right? Um, these are scholarships that you get as a member of the military. Now, there are different rules for that. Um, some of them expire within a certain amount of time. Some of them you have to be in the military for a certain length of time. An example of a military-based scholarship is the GI Bill. Um, now, I, I implore you to do your own research because they do have commitments, right? Um, so you really need to read the terms of any scholarship that you're applying to because sometimes they will have commitments and you need to know what those commitments are because if you don't meet that commitment, guess what? You're paying that money back, okay? <laughs> They're not just going to be like, oh, you didn't pay. That's okay. I know you had other plans in life. Uh, no, you're going to have to pay that money back, okay? So just make sure that you really read and really understand what the terms of your contract are. Is there a required internship? Is there a certain service um, requirement? Is there a certain length of time for my service requirement? Am I only allowed to be in school for a certain length of time? Okay, you need to really know what you're signing, okay? Any contract that you read, even college applications, you need to be aware of what's in the contract so that you know what you're signing at all times. Be careful what you put your name to. The last thing I wanna talk about are grants. You know, you may not hear, you know, scholarship grant um, as often, but a grant is a scholarship because it's money that you don't have to pay back. You don't owe anyone after you get a grant or a scholarship, right? Now, grants may be a little bit different because they can come from the government, they can come from institutions, they can come from research labs, they can come from a lot of different places, okay? Um, generally, they are private entities that offer these, just like scholarships that are external. They're gonna be private entities or their own separate entity, okay? So that's all I have for you guys today. Hopefully you understand a little bit more about all the different kinds of scholarships that are out there and hopefully you understand the terms a little bit better. I'm gonna to continue to do videos like these and try to make a scholarship series so that I can help you guys um, through, the, through your scholarship process, through your college process. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and drop some comments down below. I would love to hear from you. And if you have your own tips for applying for scholarships, go ahead Help your sister out, help your brother out, gonna put something down there so that they know how to get scholarships. We're all about free, free, free. A lot of people try to convince people that loans are the way to go, but they're not. And you don't have to have loans. You don't have to be in debt the rest of your life. That is a different mentality from a different school of thought. And we are not going to be furthering that school of thought anymore, okay? And the next video that I'm going to do is a video about how I went to Spelman College for free. Have a great day. Go out and say hello to someone that you don't know and hopefully put a smile on their face. Mm -hmm.